Do you want to learn more on how to put money to work in regenerative food and agriculture? Follow our video course via investing in regenerativeagriculture.com slash course or in the links below. Now on to the podcast. You're going to listen to an interview with Michele Manelli, CEO of Salcato Winery from Multiple Chano, Tuscany, Italy, one of the pioneers when it comes to sustainability. We're going to talk how he got started, where his passion for sustainability comes from, how he got his investors on board to turn the business around and how he is influencing his colleagues to also turn more sustainable and why it makes so much business sense. Enjoy! Welcome to another episode of Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, a podcast show where I talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why my focus on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land, grow our food and what we eat. And it's time that we as investors, big and small and consumers, start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. Before we get started, I've been recording these interviews next to my day job and I will definitely continue to do so and release about an episode a month. But at the same time, I would love to take this further, share more interviews. There are many more stories to share on investing in regenerative food and agriculture. More depth, improve the quality, maybe even doing some video series. So I started a Patreon community, which makes it easy to support creators like myself. If these podcasts have been of value to you, and if you have the means, I invite you to support me and make this happen. For more information, please find the link to my Patreon account in the description below. And now, without further ado, the interview. Enjoy! So welcome to Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered. I'm Koen van Seij, your host, and in the podcast of today, I'm joined by Michele Manelli, CEO of Salcato Winery, from Multipulciano, Tuscany, Italy, one of the pioneers when it comes to sustainability in wine, and they're also a B Corp. Welcome, Michele. Thank you for inviting me. And to start with a, a personal question, um, how did you end up in the biodynamic wine scene in Multipulciano, Tuscany? Because you don't have a history from there. Well, uh, it was a dream, uh, simply, to be a farmer, an entrepreneur, and a politician. And uh, uh, so far, I think I kind of uh, achieved all of them together by uh, by making wine, which is a nice part of agriculture, quite uh, quite uh, rich uh, of culture and complex. Uh, it's also a complex business, uh, and so it's a, it's an enterprise. <laughs> And at the same time, when you when you when you when you see and when you when you have a vision of your company that is uh, uh, that one wills to create a socially uh, virtuous model and uh, and things that 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 the that the business is a, is a central part of society in terms of uh, possibly generating. Uh, uh, an overall value, uh, and, and, and it's a relevant one for environmental matters, for social matters, then you become also, you, you catch this political dimension. And you started about, I have to look at the day, 20 years ago, I think you became head of the winery, in 1907, if I remember correctly. Did you start immediately with sustainability, or, or how did it start, and where did that come from for you personally? No, actually... At the time, uh, I definitely had my personal values, uh, uh, even though I think that uh, more than considering myself as uh, someone uh, uh, actively at the time uh, involved in, in, uh, in environmental challenges, for example, in general, in sustainability challenges, which was, by the way, a very uh, quite a boutique niche definition, you know, in the, in the late 90s, it was a starting point, uh, you know. And, uh, and it was definitely not a, a common way to approach uh, whatever, I would say. I think I had a negative reaction. I was feeling that we needed to, to challenge uh, this, the deterioration of our environment and our society. And this was uh, definitely my first challenge. And this was one of the reasons I wanted to, to try to do it from, from agriculture. And by the way, uh, as a privilege from a very nice corner of uh, and very and very pretty corner of of the world, which is Toscany and the Monte Pulciano, particularly 
And so I, I came here and I, from the beginning, imagined to, to run uh, organically, to be inspired by biodynamics. I um, started to build up the vineyards together with uh, pioneers such as uh, Daniel Schuster, uh, for example. I, so there, there were values in the sense, uh, the way we wanted to, 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 to create our relationships with, uh, with car, with workers, or in general, any, any stakeholder, let's say, that there was a value. But then this consciousness of, um, of uh, how it would have been important to create from the business a change, uh, grow, uh, grow furtherly later in, in time, especially when I decided in the, in the early 2000s to, to, to first convert the company uh, from a personal one to a, to a public, public, sorry, to a limited one and uh, start uh, a path of growth which would involve also investors and then uh, also uh, create some a bigger scale that's when i really started to face the idea of how can i be more responsible in making my business and and when it comes to because at that time the early 2000s you brought on a number of investors what was the role of sustainability in that or was it really still maybe part of inside of the company and how did they respond to to your your values in that and to your your vision of where you wanted to bring this winery well the, uh, intuitively everybody was understanding that uh, that uh, we had uh, um, the part of our mission of uh, the way we, we were approaching uh, uh, the projecting of our company and our marketing mix in general there was a, there was a uh, an attention, a special attention to, to, to these uh, themes, and, and it was intuitively appreciated. But uh, it was never at the beginning considered a, a specific uh, added value. As it became furtherly, in some way, I have uh, at the time particularly first uh, brought up the skills of the company uh, in a more traditional way. Uh, keeping uh, transparency over over this uh, this uh, evolution, and then uh, uh, and then when uh, when it became clear that uh, that we were turning around into a specific direction, uh, everybody everybody was more than happy and more than uh, than uh, than uh, interested in uh, in, uh, in following this uh, this path. So so you also not only brought the people in the company, the, the employees, etc., on this journey, but you also took your investor, investors on the journey. Oh, yeah, definitely. Very interesting. And then, I don't exactly know when, but you decided as well to try to influence not only the 50 hectares you have in, in Multipuciano and you manage, but also the, the, the your neighbors and your colleagues in the industry. Can you tell a bit more about this alliance of Vinum? that you started in, in Multipuciano to, to push for sustainability and to push the brand and the marketing around this really old and sustainable tradition of winemaking? Well, uh, the Alliance is an is a extremely interesting project we are, we are uh, running and started a few months ago of producers of Multipuciano that wants to, to, to try to lead uh, uh, some change, you know, be an uh, an incubator or a think tank of innovation for the for the territory on the on the dimension of uh, marketing also, but uh, sustainability and and uh, efficiency. Definitely, the first step is uh, to try to recognize who we are and how we, we should approach our our being Montepulciano territory. But bef- but before this, and and I. I, I I would like to point out what we did uh, as Arketo and myself uh, also uh, in contributing to, uh, to, to, to the growth of, uh, uh, of the uh, know, know-how and, and uh, in, uh, in sustainability of the wine value chain in Italy because uh, together with many partners in the academics, in the scientific community and uh, also certification bodies, uh, governmental one, uh, since now uh, 2013, as an official group, uh, we have uh, worked uh, to uh, build up a national standard for sustainability uh, in wine. So to really put together all the experiences that, uh, that were really, really uh, many and, and, and very intense uh, 
uh, that were run in, in wine uh, uh, in trying to, to create models of management uh, of so the sustainability in wine could find a common house uh, or uh, more specifically could find a common way to define the borders of sustainability and the signs of sustainability then and also to create the tools for managing it uh, along the chain and last but not least being able to to transparently uh, certify these uh, these uh, approaches and uh, uh, communicate them to public. This was the real big mission that was run first by the Forum for Wine Sustainability, the, uh, and which then led the the the, uh, the way to the to Equalitas, a company that is uh, that is uh, uh, controlled by by the consortium of Italian wines, the federation of the consortium of Italian wines, Federdoc, and uh, uh, also partnered by by uh, technical, let's say, supporters as uh, CSQA, Valor Italia, the big uh, certifiers for, for our uh, food and wine industry, or Gambero Rosso as a communication uh, uh, leader in communication in, in, in this uh, uh, field in Italy, uh, to, uh, to create a, a national standard. And it happened, it's an extremely complete and, and, uh, and uh, interesting tool. It's now being diffused and, uh, and I really dedicated a lot of energy in these last years to really uh, be able to have a common instrument where the whole industry could, uh, could work. And I mean, all the industry, I mean, the just basic agricultures, uh, those who transform, the big bottlers or, all, or companies like ours, which represent a piece of the of the cake too, not, uh, that control the whole value chain and are maybe committed to high quality like like, like we are. So it's a really something for for everybody. For everybody, this was a great uh, project that really that really I I am very satisfied to see to see grow. And do you see that the fact that you have twenty years of experience of turning your company around? gives you extra credibility with your colleagues in the, the food sector in Italy, that you have a place that you can point to, like, look, it, it can be done, it's never finished, and it, it's it's a lot of work, but you can uh, put your, your personal values of sustainability actually also in, in your company. Does it help to have that example? Oh, for sure. You know, whenever you go around, I think that... Uh, that uh, what is most, um, I mean, and I want to go, when I say go around, we often uh, are involved in conferences, seminars or whatever. And uh, I see how much it is important for uh, any, anyone who's observing this process to, to, to imagine that, that, uh, that, it's, that it has been done, that it's possible, that it's possible, as you were saying, to do it and to grow continuously and to and to keep being uh, updated and i mean in the, in the uh, and and uh, and in some way on the edge of uh, of uh, of the efficiency of the market success the known world etc and be and and also being uh, extremely efficient in energy wise you know we have this uh, we have done in 2000 uh, between 9 2009 and 11 this extremely efficient seller in terms of energy and it's possible uh, we have done uh, indexing in, uh, uh, at the time, pioneeristically in carbon uh, footprint and water footprint, uh, uh, or biodiversity. All all these things that are that are not just you know a, an academic hypothesis. When it becomes reality, this this uh, brings uh, an even greater value for for uh, for another company that looks uh, into it or. Uh, uh, or anyone involved in the value chain up to the consumer, of course. And, and when you, let's say you meet a, a winery owner at one of the conferences you go to and who has, hasn't done anything yet, but is ready to move, it, I can imagine it's quite daunting if you look at, at your winery and it's 20 years of experience of turning it around. What would you advise him or her? Where, where would you start? What would you do first? And, and where, where, do you, where do you begin? Well... If uh, we we would be talking by scratch, you know, starting by scratch, uh, in the sense of nothing already happened, because it, I think that um, uh, creating an, a good control board, uh, can I say, you know, uh, a, a control panel, sorry. Uh, so working a lot in uh, uh, in the 
in the measurement uh, or in the in general in the in the information management of uh, of the processes to get a good overview of what what's what's happening now yeah i think this is uh, i think this is very important i think that uh, so imagining to create a solid uh, a solid uh, control panel a solid uh, a solid uh, management of of information because then uh, everything becomes uh, becomes uh, uh, become the, becomes effective because it, okay then you can decide in the seller when I'm projecting I am creating to efficiency because I'm investing in renewable and this and that but then once you start if you don't have the possibility to control what 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 is effectively happen you're you you will never be be able to understand if you're you're really achieving and if your your investment is is working well you know this is the the concept so and i say it because of course you know in our industry we are typically a little bit uh, smaller so we tend to 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 uh, less care about these dimensions because we think that it's uh, it's something that is uh, for big companies and uh, is uh, yeah for big companies in uh, she will i think that the generally the reporting is is something extremely important and of course that already start by a, a, a reporting which is uh, which is uh, not only meant to report uh, the economical dimension, but all the others too. So, so creating for, for, from scratch a, a sustainability report just beside the, the annual economical one. In general, uh, I would say that this is the point. You just have to start by considering that your company project is based on a wider value that is not only the economical one. It, it must be an integrated, it must be harmoniously integrated. And you have to always think that anyway, there is always a chance. There is always a chance to find a better solution for a process, for a, whatever choice you have to, 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 to make in your, in your company management that meets, uh, the, the, that, that, uh, okay, that contributes to all the dimension. This, I, I, I can't believe that there isn't. The point is just looking for it. And so if you want to be sure to look for it, you have to create a, a reporting system and, a, and then you have to create an attitude and an approach to the to the business which is which is multi-dimensional which is agile tinkering constantly improving and ne never be satisfied basically with what you have it can always be done better exactly and and when it comes to your winery you started with looking at energy then you start looking at water biodiversity you're measuring a lot the water footprint and of course also the, the CO2 footprint of the bottles and, and the, at the end wine. What's the next step for for Salcate? Or what's the next step for you in terms of sustainability and, and regenerative agriculture? Well, I'm in the last uh, 12 months, I have finally started to work uh, to innovate uh, in uh, the social dimension. I think that, uh, of course, I, I am very happy to have invested and innovated much more in the previous 10 years in environmental matters because uh, there was a need for that. There was a much more, you know, uh, uh, the, there was a higher expectation of innovation in this field. But I think that, uh, but was one of my dream. I wanted to to go to go higher in the in the to meet higher standards of. Uh, of uh, of uh, social management of of the company and for by that I mean uh, workers first uh, and then uh, uh, community uh, local of course in the wider sense of community I have already done stuffs in the last previous years like this project that I have uh, reminded a lot of of shared projects of research and for example now we have uh, introduced in 2017 a welfare plan it's the first welfare plan codified welfare plan for a uh, wine uh, industry in Italy. I'm very happy about that. And this will allow, by the way, to increase the benefits to our works and in, in some way the, the, the overall remuneration with uh, tax advantage, which is also even efficient in terms of economics, which is a very bright, by the way, regulation that in Italy is introduced that nobody knows. <laughs> and uh, so we have worked uh, on this innovation and uh, and, uh, and this is very very interesting. We have worked for uh, now. We have a plan for uh, for um, hosting children of the local uh, primary and uh, 
uh, schools. This is also very interesting. Uh, and uh, and uh, by the way, I know it's probably out of uh, of the topics, but. Uh, it, 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 it's nothing is out of the topic on this uh, <laughs> but you know just a few weeks ago I was in a meeting with a manager of a big winery here in uh, in, uh, in the territory because we are also doing a project for a, a t- technology transfer for um, uh, on sustainability for the other wineries of the area which is uh, planning to create a software that uh, will allow any winery to manage the equalita standard so the sustainability standard with much more easiness because it's a it's a software it's a very interesting project. and i was there with this manager who, who, whose son at, uh, at uh, eight years old visited the winery here with the school our winery and he he started saying you know since the since the kid is uh, went to visit your winery at home we speak continuously about renewable energy, and he, and he asks me questions. He wants to put a solar panel at all. It starts very early. And you know, you melt down when someone tells you something like this. You really, you really want just to. You, you are like you are. Uh, you, I don't know what to say. It was really one of the biggest satisfaction I had in uh, in, in the recent years. Honestly, uh, that's uh, that's it. So that that is a bit of an, an, an next challenge. Uh, you know, to get to get your influence out out of the beyond your farm gate. Of course, you've worked with the wineries that may be a bit further away, and with the the board to create a a standard. And and now you're looking more and more into the other stakeholders. Yeah, with like uh, yeah, the local stakeholders, but the, and and as I was saying, workers. How how many do you have? Well, uh, in this moment, long term workers are fourteen. And uh, seasonal with seasonal workers that uh, I mean on the touristic part only, we get to 20. And then we have, uh, of course, now since a few years we don't have any more seasonal workers in the in the fields because it's uh, now we have a very efficient uh, efficient um, uh, offer of uh, uh, outsourced labor for uh, for the peaks of work in the fields. Uh, and so that's where we. And by the way, this is also something we are working to. We are, we are working to uh, to 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 how can I say to grow uh, the quality, the standards also of our of our suppliers. We've always worked a little bit in this sense, even how can I say accidentally. You know, when when in 2008, I think it was something like this, we decided uh, to 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 purchase only wood material wood source materials from certified PFC or FSC chains which was very pioneeristic at the time you it was very complicated to find the, the suppliers at the time you you had to really uh, it took months to find a guy that could make labels for us uh, cardboard boxes or, or, or anything the corks it was really tough, tough. And what was very interesting is that over time, the local suppliers start that were our previous ones started to get certifications to serve us, and then the certification was spread around. And this is the the thing. So this is the impact of the pioneers. Yeah, this is the impact exactly of, of just making things, innovating, changing, uh, creating the the, the, the the starting some. Uh, the process and, you, and then something happened. Even if you are, even if we were super small supplier uh, clients for, for for all them, but but you know the it's a seed, and and this is uh, the same uh, again for the social aspects that uh, we we want now to transfer to the to the labor companies to the, to the, and this is the this is very important. And and is that something that let's say we'll we'll talk again in a year from now. Is that something you you want to look back at that you really made some big steps on on the social part? Will that be the focus of of this year? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is my focus now. And in terms of is when when you're looking at barriers for when your colleagues see you doing it so successfully, and as an example, what do you think is the barrier for many of them to? to not doing it yet or maybe just started looking at it a few years ago and not 20 years ago what are the main barriers for for this regenerative agriculture approach to to scale in in the wine business 
Well, I think uh, in some way uh, you consider it uh, not a priority because uh, for some reason you think that it's uh, not something that is going to bring uh, a direct value or not a pre- not something that is more important than something else. Then you don't have models to refer to. Not everybody is uh, ready and, uh, and, and has the attitude of uh, going to the unknown. You know, the process of innovation is, 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 is something that requires uh, some kind of... Uh, of uh, violence that you have to make. You know, any extraordinary action sometimes is something that needs a special uh, effort, and it's an attitude. It's an attitude that legitimately not everybody should have. And so and so many need uh, examples. No, otherwise we'd run into issues. Exactly. Uh, many, and, uh, you know, also it's a kind of investment because you have to imagine that uh, for, for especially bigger companies, when they have to change a process, that works and maybe makes money, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a strange investment, you know, if you, or at least it's a, Yeah, how do you explain that to the family or to, to your investors and to the owners? Yeah. To the investor, exactly, to the, maybe there's one or two, a brother and a sister, and maybe the brother wants it, but the sister doesn't take care about it, you know, something like that. It can, uh, it can happen. And so, and so, this is uh, this is definitely. So, I think that that uh, bringing out examples and and uh, successful ones is is, a, is an essential uh, element of uh, diffusion of these uh, good practices. And then, of course, it's it, 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 there is also uh, hopefully the the, the idea that uh, the market will help us. Uh, because if we if we co- start to offer, sometimes the, the, the demand requires an offer. So if we start to offer more and more, uh, it will be then a, a virtuous circle of uh, it will generate uh, uh, expectations in this sense from from other companies. Have you, have you seen speaking of the market? Have you seen that change a lot in the last twenty years? For sure. Um, for sure, and uh, I think that uh, still today um, we are not uh, seeing uh, a prevalence of consumers that uh, um, are ready to uh, cho- to choose, let's say, a sustainable product uh, uh, rather than another one uh, because it's sustainable. And I think that this will never happen, or at least it's not ready to happen uh, soon, unless something extremely radical changes in the in the society. I, I would say, I consider that uh, though there are more and more people that are ready to put this value beside other values, which is already something extremely important. So, uh, and I mean, okay, we are uh, the consumer is interested to have. A good product in the sense, for example, in a wine must be quality uh, at the right price with uh, the right uh, services around it, you know, the right packaging in terms of if you consider it as a service, you know, in some some way uh, uh, and uh, sustainable as an added value of the others. This is, I think, is the way to read the, 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 the market today. Uh, and, and it is extremely important to read it this way because uh, uh, we are in front of uh, what uh, we were 10, 15 years ago imagining only, which was uh, that uh, it's, it's, uh, the point is not creating a green product. Uh, the, the, the point is uh, making become a green product the economical product. You know, so making the, the, the green product become the successful one. Which is a totally different approach. So uh, it doesn't. So it, it doesn't even have to be cold green, and let's hope to be to be now almost almost. Uh, and it's and it's quite true. Let's imagine to be to be beyond this point. The point is that we have to make the best product, which is also the best product for for the society and the environment. Yeah, the best product, which is by definition has to be has to be green and sustainable. Exactly. This is uh, this is the and I think that this is the consumer that we have in front of us. Now, and in wine in particular, uh, we see that uh, that the consumers, uh, even in wine, are 
are uh, approaching this this uh, team just as for other products. Uh, we have uh, uh, the problems are similar to other to other categories are the, the definition of the sustainable product and the transparency of uh, the uh, in, uh, of the proof I can say of the uh, certification or confirmation uh, process of uh, of the sustainability uh, skill. So so basically this is the, the biggest problem, one of the two big problems. The second I would say is that. Uh, we have a very fragmented typically offer and distribution and in general uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we have we have like a, a big barrier to to climb which is our distribution channels I, we see and i don't know if it's similar for other categories but we see that our distributors are uh, often so the, the the distribution chain let's say in general it's often the one which is uh, pulling back because it again they don't understand so they don't invest in these skills they don't know they don't they, they, they're, they're not ready to, to really promote a product which has these skills because they don't understand these skills and, and then so they don't want to put their face on it and what would be a solution for that fragmented distribution or the distribution channels that are are now maybe slowing it down or holding it back what, what do you see as a solution there but in fact, I see the same solution as uh, uh, for the general problem of how to see growing sustainability in our value chain. So it means, again, uh, less standards, more solid. This is the point. So at least we have to, um, to, to, to freeze a little bit the situation and say, okay, this is sustainability. We have defined these are the standards. And, uh, and so we, we have to see them more uh, uh, visible in the market so that at least a dimension is created. It's like organic today, for example. It took a, it took a while. But if you, if you I, I'm sure, and I've seen some, uh, even last week, uh, a little survey made by Rome University, they went out to saying what is not organic food or healthy food as we were imagining 10 15 years ago being related to organic they went around and say what is a sustainable food or wine and the consumer said it's organic so it's because it's the only it's the only label brand uh, that is so well known and that is so well known okay so now there is even this further confusion because organic is not a sustainable uh, system it's just the best practice for uh, for farming you know and it's even Best practice, which is uh, which is not uh, considering best practice that is just uh, limiting chemi chemicals in in the farming, but it's not at all talking. It's a first step. About, it's a little first step. It's not talking about energy. It's not talking about water. It's not talking about biodiversity management. It's not talking about social management. So uh, they don't even care. They, they can't control. They don't control if you if you have uh, you know. Uh, I'm sorry to, to be shocking, but if you if you have uh, immigrant workers uh, uh, without any uh, any legal uh, uh, care or social care uh, and uh, paid uh, half of the minimum wage, to make an example, which suddenly happen, which, which you can still be organic. Exactly, you can still be organic, which suddenly happens in the world. Uh, till today, and and so and, and so this is the this is something that uh, that is uh, so the first solution is this is to be more organized in in, in in governing this process of standard transparency and one label one brand or at least few of them that talks the same language etc. So this which is what we are as I was saying what we are trying to do as an industry. And we, uh, with with the qualities, we have uh, we have a very very good chance to 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 make this to make a difference, and then um, and then uh, once this is done, uh, it's it's of course a matter of just uh, of uh, it, it it happens by by itself. It happens by itself. It's a cultural issue, by the way. <laughs> Again, what do you mean by that? I mean that at the end we can't uh, imagine. When I, when I say culture, I just want to point that it's a complex dimension that requires uh, a diffuse knowledge. You know, we have, 
you know, I make this example. Uh, when in the 60s, so after the war, the European Union partners imagined the system of the wine appellations, they had a dream. They had a, they had a vision. The vision was we have to promote a quality agriculture. We have to also control it, but we have to really promote a quality agriculture that is going to be more healthy, more successful, uh, and uh, valuable for the consumer and for the producer. And so they were defining, in some way they were writing down on paper, the rules to, to define a wine, because they had to meet and say, okay, what is wine? And the common codification, wine is made of grapes, certain alcohol, then what is an appellation? Okay, it needs a territory, it needs a certain param uh, yield per hectare and maybe uh, farm in a certain way. It requires a, a certain process of aging and then it ne needs to meet specific requirements of, uh, you know, uh, uh, biological parameters like uh, alcohol, acidity, etc. So they defined something that then became, okay, the uh, identity, okay, the, then there were the sommelier, they started to for the interpreter, I mean, I call them sommelier, but like a wine expert, like a journalist, okay, then this appellation has this character, because it's made of this grape in this territory, with this, it has this scent, and they started to create a, a further a dimension of quality, you know, a language, uh, codifying, it, it was something complex, there was, in, there was a gover involved the political bodies, the industry uh, of, of uh, farming, but also industry of services like media, and, uh, and, any, and then the consumers started to get involved. They wanted to, to participate. They wanted to visit. They wanted to uh, buy a course of wine or a book on wine. So just, just a, in this sense, we can call this a culture. So uh, I think, and, 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 and that is what we have to, uh, to, to aim as a vision, to create. We need a new culture because sustainability. Today, it's, uh, for the last 20 years, it has been research and development it has been, you know, so it was a great, it was fermentation, you know, a lot of fermentation around, a lot of projects, not a chaos, but a, 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 a positive chaos. Now we have to see the next step in which we codify and create the, the, the main signs so that in, within these signs, within the new, the, the new appellations, the appellations of sustainability, we can, uh, we can see with more order the growth of, uh, of, uh, of the whole uh, value chain and the industry and the market in this sense. This is, this is I think, uh, uh, what we have to aim. And, and in some way, we are doing it. Italy is, Italy is working in this direction. It's working, everyone is. Uh, but uh, probably Italy is one of the most, uh, firm, uh, the most advanced country. It's hard to imagine sometimes, <laughs> but it, it is. I, w I would like to end with a final question on um, let's imagine and I hope so that a number of, of smart impact investors are listening uh, to this this podcast and what would you tell them if they would like to get into the regenerative or the sustainable winery or agriculture but let's let's look specifically at winery space what what would be your advice to look for maybe they're based in the US maybe they're based in Europe maybe they're based in, in South Africa um, what, what would be some of the questions you would ask if they want to invest in a winery? What would be the questions you ask to a winery to see if they are if they're truly sustainable, if they're truly thinking this holistically? Well, uh, I would, um, first of all, I would ask, do you, I would, if I have to have, a, if, I, if I have time, let's put it this way, not in the sense in our interview, but... <laughs> In my in my uh, assessment of uh, this uh, company, I would uh, I would start to understand uh, what is the uh, general approach of at the different level. So, what is the knowledge of um, uh, of the of the different tools that are existing today uh, of measurement, uh, what uh, and, and management of sustainability. So, what is the the knowledge of uh, what today are these this elements of this of this uh, of this big picture, then I would uh, then I would uh, of course uh, at the same time and as strongly try to understand if they are solidly also basing their project on the knowledge of the 
market in the more traditional way. So definition of quality, as we were saying before, efficiency and uh, marketing, uh, whatever. Because I think that uh, there must be today you have to develop a specific culture, as we were saying before. So in 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 uh, in anything in the, in the sustainable approach. So I don't know. I mean, knowing what is a carbon footprint, a water footprint, knowing how to implement this. Uh, these indicators in your management and uh, and so on, uh, being updated in the, in this uh, in this uh, know-how, uh, very well updated. But on the other hand, never forgetting, and this probably at a financial investor level, that uh, we are not creating, we are not selling carbon footprint. We are selling a good bottle of wine first. I want to thank you for for your time and and sharing what you shared in, in this podcast. And I would be definitely be checking in with you in, in the next months and next years to see how you're progressing and, and uh, what your next impact and your next steps will be. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cohen. You just listened to an interview with Michele Manelli. I hope you enjoyed learning more about sustainable wineries and what it means to run a sustainable winery. Thank you for making the time to listen to this podcast and making it all the way till the end. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you found the Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food podcast valuable, there are a few simple ways you can use to support it. Number one, rate and review the podcast on your podcast app. That's the best way for other listeners to find the podcast, and it only takes a few seconds. Number two, share this podcast on social media or email it to your friends and colleagues. Number three, if this podcast has been of value to you, and if you have the means, please join my Patreon community to help grow this platform and allow me to take it further. You can find all the details on patreon.com slash regenerative agriculture or in the description below. Thank you so much and see you at the next podcast. Dear friends of the podcast, I'm super excited to share with you the online video course investing in regenerative agriculture and food. How to put money to work in regenerating soils at scale and growing a lot of tasty food while doing it. Why are we doing this course? After 100 interviews and more than 100 hours of audio asking the question how to put money to work in regenerating soils, and have been following the space since 2011 and recording this podcast since 2016, we thought it was time to share our lessons learned. What have we seen in the space over the last years? How have we built our decision-making framework? What to focus on with the podcast? How have we picked interviewees and what questions should you ask? What is happening in the space? What should you read? What should you uh, listen? What should you watch? How to approach this space? For whom is this course? You, the soil builders and investors in this space. The soil builders, people working in this space, entrepreneurial farmers, fund managers, vehicle builders, crowd investing, platform builders, ag tech companies, farm to gut food companies, permaculture, key line designers, holistic management consultants, etc., etc. People that are building soil at scale. And the investors who are putting their own money to work through their family office or as private individuals, or people who are putting other people's money to work through foundations, um, institutional capital, banks, insurance companies, etc. Is this course free? No. This is pay what you think it's worth. Meaning I have no way of knowing what this course will be worth to you. And I'm very aware that among the listeners of this podcast, um, we have people with very different means. So I'm inviting you, if this course is creating value to you, and if you have the means to consider paying what you think it's worth. Thank you. So what is this course? It's currently a series of 17 videos, mostly ranging from 10 to 15 minutes, plus PDF slides, so you don't have to write along. We're going to look into why invest in regenerative agriculture and why extractive agriculture is so risky, how to invest, what kind of frameworks you could and I think should build, what to invest in, uh, what kind of co-investors you could find or what kind of investors you could find if you're a soil builder. Every lesson will have a digging deeper part where I will share what kind of reports, what kind of interviews, what kind of videos you can look into if you want to dig deeper. We're going to look at nutrient density, landscape design and a lot more. So what is it not? It's not a list of investable deals. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist in this world. We're really at the beginning of the regenerative agriculture and food revolution. It's also not investment advice. Before making any investment, please find professional investment advice. So get ready, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea or whatever you're drinking. Click on the link below, sign up, and I'm really looking forward to your feedback.